Hello, everybody. Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. Coming back to you with another really excellent episode, and today we're going to talk about a really important piece of The Boring Company puzzle, something that's going to make running autonomous vehicles through the loop system very, very efficient and quick. And what is that thing? That is going to be Plaid powertrains. So it's been a while since the Plaid powertrain was announced. It is a phenomenal piece of technology. Really, uh, Tesla has done a really uh, great job over the last nine to 10 years, really refining and perfecting and improving the motors in the Model S and the Model X. And this is kind of the, uh, the pinnacle of the kind of technical expertise and refinement and you've got to give the team a lot of credit for that but how does that play into the boring company and running uh, autonomous vehicles on the ground well obviously we're going to be running vehicles at very very high speeds uh, and you're going to need uh, really high rates of acceleration at certain points in the system so having a plaid powertrain is a really important key addition now if you don't believe the plaid powertrain is going to be added to the Boeing Company uh, vehicles, then you are badly mistaken because it is and it is very much uh, needed. It is the most powerful uh, battery electric vehicle powertrain ever produced, pound for pound. Maybe there are other uh, powertrains that are more powerful, but they are much heavier, much bulkier, and probably cost twice as much uh, per kilogram. So it is a very, very efficient and very, very reliable. Um, powerful motor and remember each uh, vehicle has three motors because it's a tri-motor setup potentially that could go up to quad motor but uh, the question is do you really need four motors when you've got all this power anyway achieve zero to 60 in just 1.99 seconds with 199 mile per hour top speed it's actually 199.5 but you know let's round it up or round it down as it were so those are fairly impressive for the Boeing Company system. We're looking probably more at accelerating from, say, 40 miles per hour up to, say, 120, 130 miles per hour. That's going to be kind of the sweet spot. And this powertrain is certainly good enough to achieve a very, very high rates of acceleration, even at very high speeds. Similar powertrains will be integrated into all performance Tesla vehicles. It's obvious they spent a lot of time uh, perfecting these motors and inevitably we're going to see these uh, pop up in all future iterations of uh, kind of Tesla and Boeing company uh, vehicles. Um, so obviously Roadster 2.0, Cybertruck, the AEV or minibus as some people call it and the Model X. I'm not really a fan of calling it the minibus. I prefer to say AEV but do people know what an AEV is? You know we shouldn't really be throwing acronyms around all the time but hey AEV sounds better for me. The carbon wrap motors allow insanely high RPM. So if you watch the presentation of the uh, Plaid powertrain, one of the reasons that motor can actually stay intact at extremely high uh, you know, rates of RPM is because of those carbon wrap motors. Uh, otherwise, the, the, the motor itself would literally explode. So very important addition. And that, I think Elon said, was the, the first kind of example of, of an automotive company introducing carbon wrap motors in production vehicles and the Boeing company has free unfettered access to this technology basically any kind of technology that tesla has uh, will be passed on to the Boeing company and elon musk will wave it across so um, there might be a small fee associated with that but no other company in the world has access to all this technology and it's available essentially for peanuts so it, it's all looking rather good for the Boeing company to get access to this plaid powertrain it's key to better robo taxi and uh, the Boeing company systems or loops so i anticipate that in the future uh, highways uh, and dual carriageways and other kind of uh, uh, city to city roads uh, will have the speed limits increased as there are less and less drivers on the road accidents will fall considerably and then we'll start to see the speed limit increasing maybe 75 80 90 potentially up to 100 miles per hour on some highways in some states 
Uh, I certainly think in the UK we'll be getting up to 100 miles per hour in the next sort of 10 years once we uh, see uh, autonomous systems proving that they are much, much safer than, you know, the standard human drivers who make a lot of mistakes when you really look at the data. Okay. AV or high occupancy vehicle. Now, if you have been following this channel, possibly from the early days or even over the last year or so, you'll occasionally see me throw in this picture of a particular high occupancy vehicle that is uh, quite interesting to say the least. It looks beautiful. It's got a good design to it. However, this kind of volume of glass is just not going to be introduced in a production vehicle. This is more of kind of demonstration of, of what it will look like. Obviously, on, uh, on videos, it looks better if you can actually see into the vehicles while they're moving around. In the real world, it's going to look quite different to this, but the, the kind of format and layout are going to generally stay the same. This vehicle is coming, by the way, and it will be coming a lot sooner than you think it is. I know other YouTubers are talking about this, and I've been thinking about this for quite a while. I believe that uh, either the end of this year, maybe Q4 or Q1, we will start to see um, proposals for this vehicle. Now, I have said that in the past, and I've may possibly got it wrong, but, you know, I think inevitably we're going to see something. So, if you read the original master plan and were impressed with what, Elon Musk managed to achieve in those 10 years, 10 or so years, then you should read the Tesla Master Plan Part 2. Uh, obviously, um, all these uh, targets that they had for the original Master Plan were completed in, in good time and to a high standard, so that's great. But if you now go to the second part, Part 2, it does talk about quite a lot of things that are underway at the mo this moment in time. Uh, let me see if I can get my pen out for this one. So, obviously the Model 3 has been in production for quite a while now. Uh, and the Model Y as well, the compact SUV, uh, has been a roaring success. Uh, Cybertruck has massive amounts of pre-orders. Everything so far on this plan is going quite well. Um, scale up production volume obviously they have the factories in berlin and texas and probably some more on the way um, and we've just announced today as well that the semi truck will be uh, beginning uh, fabrication and manufacturing in nevada and texas so that's all very very good but the most important part is kind of this 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 other half so they talk here about, in addition to consumer vehicles, there are two other types of electric vehicle needed. These are heavy duty trucks and high passenger density urban transport. I believe that is the Boring Company Autonomous Electric Vehicle. Both are in the early stages of development. Remember this was around 2016, 2017. So we are kind of a little bit behind here. Um, I'm, I'm guessing most of the emphasis over the last two years has been on the pickup truck, has been on the Model Y, has been on refining the Model 3, and obviously has been on the, uh, the Tesla Semi, which is just about to start kind of uh, medium kind of capacity uh, production, uh, or low to medium. So the next kind of um, stage in the plan is with the advent of the autonomy, it will probably make sense to shrink the size of buses. And I could not agree more, but there's no reason why buses so should be as big as they are now. Um, it's just the fact that it makes more economic sense to have one driver and 60 passengers than one driver and 20 passengers because each driver can move more people. In a world with autonomous vehicles, electric motors and very, very cheap electricity, the size of a bus could easily fall 60, 70, 80%. Transition the role of a bus driver to that of a fleet manager. Traffic congestion would improve due to increased passenger aerial density by eliminating the center aisle and putting seats where they are currently, currently entryways. So at this moment in time, I'm guessing that Elon Musk wasn't really thinking much about the boring company or it was in the back of his mind and he didn't decide to uh, publicize it here. But Obviously, at some point in time, he decided that um, the, the surface roads are just not enough and they're going to need additional tunnels, and that's where the Boeing company comes in with its loop system. Um, it talks about smooth flow traffic flow. So 
it makes sense to put things in tunnels obviously because there's no traffic lights there's no roundabouts uh, there's no uh, pedestrians running across the road and there's probably not many uh, dogs and cats and other animals that are jumping out in front of you people in wheelchairs and <laughs> cyclists so um it talks about interesting things like fix someone buttons at existing bus stops which is an interesting one when everyone has a you know a smartphone pretty much like 98 percent of the uk american europe population chinese have smartphones now so i'm not sure really the need for summon buttons uh but here is another key point design accommodates wheelchairs strollers and bikes so that would encompass an open plan layout in some vehicles maybe others would just be purely seats but there would be uh, space for you as a wheelchair user for you as a cyclist to enter the vehicle the only way to do that is to have a much uh, larger uh, longer vehicle with lots of headroom now i've obviously shown you that picture that has been published by the boring company but in my mind, I have a different visualization of what I think the actual um, boring company autonomous electric vehicle will look like. I think it will look more like this. Now, this is uh, a render from a company called Luminar that actually produce LIDARs. So this is a company that is very, very close to uh, becoming extinct. They just don't realize yet. But um, if you have a look at this particular vehicle, it has all the attributes that a Boeing company autonomous electric vehicle should have. It's a nice, simple design, which means it's going to be easy to manufacture. Um, it, it, it's got this nice kind of angled front, which is going to be good for the drag coefficient, a flat bottom. It's got these covers on the wheels. It's got these big doors. These are both double doors, by the way. So these doors are both going to open up along these sliders here, I'd imagine. And then people could... Uh, could, could jump out and wheelchairs could get out easily so that is kind of what you want really from a Boeing company autonomous vehicle you obviously want high speed runnings you want the vehicle to be capable of doing you know 140 150 miles per hour if necessary probably be be, be traveling somewhere in the, the, the region of 115 to 120 miles per hour on a typical day but there may be some areas where it goes above you know 125 miles per hour 140 miles per hour uh you obviously want a, a large battery so that it can run for at least six or seven hours a day maybe more uh you want lots of internal space you want you know room to potentially stand as well uh you know you want room f uh, potentially for wheelchairs uh you don't want uh, a steering wheel that people can go over and, and, and abuse essentially and you want it to be very, very burr and easy to clean and have very, very efficient motors. So it'll either be a tri-motor or a quad motor. And ideally, you want high acceleration. So all these uh, attributes will result in this vehicle probably having uh, the Plaid powertrain in it. Maybe a modified work version. Obviously, over time, Tesla makes further improvements. Um, and obviously, this vehicle will benefit from the latest uh, full self-driving software and the latest battery uh, uh, technology and uh, battery management systems from um, Tesla. So the vehicle specs will be extremely good for this and I'm pretty confident it will look very, very much like this. So it's not going to have as much glass as the previous render, but you know, really when you sat down and you're in a tunnel, do you need to see everything really? No, you can have a lot less glass. A lot less glass means a lot less cost um and it, it just means there's a lot less area that uh, potentially could get easily broken okay so the the specs of the tesla model s are very very good i expect that the uh, autonomous electric vehicles in the Boeing company system will have similar -ish specs probably slightly slower because they'll they'll be heavier although they will have a larger battery pack um so let's just kind of summarize what i think is going to happen so it's going to be a high passenger density urban transport as was said in the part de of the master plan uh, will be manufactured in texas possibly nevada as well or possibly berlin but i think initially it will be texas texas will be kind of the uh, uh, center of manufacturing excellence for tesla in my opinion um level four autonomous from day one uh, at the 
at this very moment in time, they are collecting the data and refining full self-driving, I believe in the very, very near future, probably by the end of this year to the middle of Q1 uh, of next year, they, they will be getting very, very, very close to level four, very close. Uh, platoons will be used, uh, used or, or useful at high speeds, so we will see uh, vehicles in you know four, five, six car platoons, and by driving relatively close to each other, they will see efficiency gains, which is important when you have a very heavy vehicle and you're driving it at very high speeds. Number five, no steering wheel or center console. Uh, as Elon Musk keeps saying that the best part is no part, the best process is no process. So having no steering wheel, having no central console, that's no cost to you. You can you can essentially put all the electronics under the floor, uh, and, and you don't need to worry about people, you know, breaking things, spilling coffee on it, all those sorts of things that happen in mass transit. Number six, the most important thing is obviously the future of Tesla. Uh, will be accelerated by the introduction of 4680 cells. These will come in probably mid-2022 when we'll start to see them introduced in pretty much every vehicle uh, that, that Tesla intends to, or performance vehicle that Tesla intends to manufacture. Um, so, so yeah, 4680 is very, very important in terms of energy density, in terms of uh, high rate of charging, in terms of how many miles uh, each cell can accomplish. So it, it, it's, you know, these are the glory days for, for Tesla. Um, in 10 years time, people will be writing about the, uh, uh, the Tesla master plans, both of them, and maybe there might be a third one and be saying, you know, this was uh, executed to perfection for the Boeing company and the 4680 will be a core part of uh, Tesla's you know, success over the next 10 to 15 years. Okay, that's the end. I hope you really enjoyed that. I'm very, very much excited about the, the Plaid powertrains and their possible integration into various Tesla platforms and Boeing company platforms and maybe even into other vehicles in the future so if you would like to support me and support this channel please follow me on twitter also come and join our discord and let's have a chat and, and talk about various things happy to join happy for you to join and come and talk to us uh, and also please consider supporting me on patreon for just two dollars a month that support would be very very much appreciated um, all my Patreons provide wonderful support for my channel. They've helped me invest in my setup here in my studio. Uh, we have a wonderful microphone and you know, a wonderful camera and a wonderful uh, monitor here. And we're looking to make some more additions as well in the future. Uh, and these will all continue to improve the quality of uh, YouTube videos that I can produce for all of you. And I, I really hope that you can stick along with me along with this journey. We're getting very, very close to 8,000 uh, followers on YouTube. Please like and subscribe to this channel. That would be very much appreciated. If you've not subscribed yet, please do so because we're very close to 8,000 subscribers. And I really, really want to get to that milestone. It's very, very important to me. So thank you everyone. Thank you all my Patreons who have supported me throughout this, uh, you know, these, these difficult kind of 18 months, uh, they've been putting their money into this channel and I really very much appreciate that. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Thank you and please comment below. Uh, if you like this video, it's likely that it will recommend other videos that are very similar to this. So it's always worth liking the video and please comment, tell me if you think that this video covered all the points in uh, good detail. So yeah, thanks very much for joining me on this wonderful evening and I really hope you come and join me again. Thank you, and remember, don't be boring. I will see you on the next one. Have a great time. Thank you. Goodbye. It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. I'm all out of gold.